we spend so much time researching a pair of jeans that we're going to buy or a pair of shoes that we're going to buy. Or maybe we'll research the vacation spot that we go to, but we spend hardly any time researching where our skincare comes from or where our food comes from. Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 17 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today, I want to give a shout out to an amazing listener, someone whom I deeply respect. Her name is Nutrition Brit. I actually know who she is. And she is a fellow clinician, and I really appreciate her shout out on iTunes. She shared, Jennifer is highly regarded in the nutrition and functional medicine world and always provides actionable, real-world strategies for improving health. What I love most about this podcast is that she doesn't just focus content on how to feel or look well, though there's plenty of tips included, but she digs into things so much deeper so that you can find the root cause behind the symptoms so that we can actually be well. If you're tired of silencing and suppressing skin issues and actually want to dig into the why behind them, this podcast is an invaluable resource for the client and clinician alike. Highly recommended. Brett, thank you so, so much for sharing your opinion. I deeply appreciate it. And you guys, that's awesome that we have clinicians and practitioners listening to these episodes. And I've had a lot of great feedback from other colleagues saying they learn something every single time. So that means that what we are doing not only is helping us as a community, but it's also helping to educate those around us who want to support us in our health and on our health journeys. But maybe we will also begin changing how things are being done in that doctor's office during your visits. How great would that be? I just want to say thank you guys for being on this journey. And if you haven't shared your thoughts yet on the podcast, head on over to iTunes and leave a review. It's much appreciated. And I promise you, people who visit wondering if this podcast is worth giving a listen will take your words seriously. Today, I want to take a listener's question. This is one that was written to us. So unfortunately, we don't have their wonderful voice to share. But Elizabeth, thank you so much for writing in. And Elizabeth asks, is psoriasis an autoimmune condition? And if so, how do I address it as both a skin condition and an autoimmune condition? Great question, Elizabeth. I like that you're putting your thinking cap on here and realizing that if there is an autoimmune component... How do we look at this from both sides? So to answer your question, yes, psoriasis is considered an autoimmune disease. It's an important point that many people whom I meet who've been diagnosed with psoriasis were never told. And I know that in some circles of conventional medicine, doctors don't necessarily view autoimmunity as something where you would do anything different in order to address the condition. But that is truthfully, isn't quite the case. And there's a lot of things from a functional or integrative perspective that you can do differently. Now, the first thing to understand is that what an autoimmune disease means is that your body's immune system has confused your own tissue with an invader or an attacker, and it's really trying to do good by you. So I don't want you to walk away from this thinking, oh my goodness, my body has betrayed me. That is certainly not the case. And if anything, it's trying to protect you. It's just confused. And so we want to help reduce the triggers that basically press or push the autoimmune process forward. And one of the ways, at least from a functional perspective, is to look at what's going on in the gut, because that is one of the top ways in which your immune system interacts on a constant basis with the outside, because what's actually inside this digestive tube that each of us have is technically the outside of our body. And the lining of the tube, so to speak, is only one cell layer thick. So when we have issues where that cell lining becomes permeable, It allows for substances and partially undigested proteins and we'll just say like parts of bacteria and viruses and things that normally live in the digestive system to now interact 
with your immune system in ways that are not exactly ideal. And so when you are diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, generally speaking, and again, this is from a functional medicine perspective, you want to look specifically at your gut. And then we typically will also look at the liver and there's other buckets in the body. I like to call them buckets, so to speak. So you got the gut bucket, you've got a liver bucket, you may have a hormone bucket, a thyroid bucket, a skin bucket. You've got all these different buckets and you want to take a look and prioritize them based on what is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck of where to start addressing the issue. And I can tell you from experience in working in a clinical practice that the gut is always typically the first place you begin. And here's the thing, by addressing that, you're able to then reduce permeability through the gut, the inflammation that's generated there, as well as the triggers that are constantly confusing your immune system. And yes, it actually is possible to see antibody loads. So for those of you listening who may have another autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's and such, and I'm not by any means giving false hope here, but you can clinically see people who make a lot of changes improve or decrease their antibody levels. It is possible. And so those lifestyle shifts and dietary shifts and things that you do actually can play a really big role in how you feel. So because you do have what is considered to be an autoimmune disease, the best first step that you can do is to remove gluten from your diet. And I have plenty of resources on a website, which I'll link here in the show notes as to how to start doing that. It's actually not all that difficult in this day and age, but it's a good step, not because I'm saying or implying that you have gluten sensitivity. The reason is that gluten in and of itself is the one protein that has the capacity, and this has been tested, it is scientifically proven that gluten increases gut permeability or what we call leaky gut in this world. And so by removing gluten from your diet, that helps reduce your body's triggers, so to speak. Okay. So it's reducing the leakiness of the gut that is already leaky, but we just don't want to make it more leaky. And I hope that makes sense. I would also recommend that you check out the list of skin labs that I have posted here on the blog over at skinterrupt.com. Again, I'll put that in today's show notes. You want to look for nutrient deficiencies. That's incredibly important. Oftentimes, I encourage clients to increase their protein intake. And one way that I do that, that it seems to be the most effective is by adding in at least one protein shake a day. Sometimes you can do a swap out with, uh, say, breakfast or lunch, whatever's most convenient for you, really increasing protein levels, assuming that's appropriate for your particular health condition and using a formula that is very clean, but also I like to use formulas that are hydrolyzed, meaning that the proteins are already broken down so your body doesn't have to do any sort of work. It can just absorb them. And that way the proteins aren't making its way further downstream. If they happen to not be digested appropriately and feed your gut bugs in a way that they shouldn't. And it also ensures that your body is able to fully absorb these proteins and utilize them to build healthier skin, to build enzymes that your body needs for biochemical pathways and for things like hormone conversion, right? From your inactive thyroid hormone, T4, to your active thyroid hormone, which is T3. Many, many, many things. So protein intake is super, super important, especially when you have an autoimmune disease. And ideally, you want to shoot for somewhere between 70 to 80 grams minimum a day. It may be higher depending on your particular situation, but I I would encourage you to take a look and get to know how much protein you're consuming in your diet. And if you're looking for some great protein shake recommendations, I'll also put a link to a great resource that I created in our show notes. All right, without further ado, I want to introduce my guest today. She is going to be talking on a topic that I think is highly important, especially with the rise in quote unquote clean 
body care and skin care, this whole beauty arena, and how a lot of times companies are not being entirely honest about the ingredients that they are using in their products and even creating labels that mislead us into believing that they are cleaner than they are. Without further ado, let's dive in. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Natural Skin Show. Today, we're going to talk about some really important details about why what you put on your skin might actually be causing more triggers and more inflammation and more flares because of what's in them despite how they're packaged or described by the company. And so I know a lot of you guys are going to the drugstore or the pharmacy, or you're just grabbing something at your local grocery store and you're looking for sensitive skin products or things that are specific to say like super dry skin or eczema, you know, for eczema, whatever, not realizing that there are things in these products that don't actually serve you. And you really should know about them as you're moving on this journey and cleaning out your body care products and understanding how those can actually have a negative impact on the microbiome of the skin, the inflammatory levels in the skin that make it continually itchy or flared. So I just want to help you understand that the skincare industry is complicated. And I've brought for you today, a wonderful guest. I invited her on the show and I'm so glad to have her with me. Her name is Rachel Pachivas and she is Anne-Marie Skincare's COO. She keeps the behind the scenes of the company growing with grace. I love that. Growing with grace. And aside from her many behind the scenes roles in the areas of product research and development, branding and styling, budgeting, HR, et cetera, she's, she's doing a lot of heavy lifting, guys. She also works to increase education on organics, chemicals, and the skincare industry. So that's what's really important to us today is she understands what's going in these products and what we need to be aware of. And for those of you who don't know, you're not familiar, Anne-Marie Skincare is one of my favorite skincare companies. I have used their products for almost a year now, religiously. It's changed my skin for the better, and I love them, so I'm happy to share them with you. And thank goodness Rachel's here, but if you're not familiar with them, Anne-Marie Skincare crafts organic and wild-crafted skincare for people around the world. Yes, you can order them, the products, no matter where you live, with the goal to move chemicals off the shelf and out of the industry. Rachel, thanks so much for joining us. Ah, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so you kind of heard my little, my little spiel there <laughs> about all these products on the shelf. And, you know, it's funny. I get questions from readers and listeners as well as clients saying like, hey, have you tried this skin cream or this? I bought this at the pharmacy or I saw this on a Facebook group. But it's something that they bought at the drugstore that's made by essentially a pharmaceutical company. And there's a lot of stuff in those those lotions. And I know we need to moisturize our skin and, and we put all these other products on our skin. But are they, you know, even if it's a sensitive, is it really, <laughs> is it really really safe for your skin? There is a lot of greenwashing going on and there is a lot of terminology that we think is going to be safe and that's going to allow us to use certain products that we see in the drugstore. But no, they're not. And the majority of products that we see in drugstores are conventionally made. They're mass produced. They're made to help a bottom line and to create profit. And A lot of these products are less expensive. Sometimes they are expensive, but you flip the ingredients and you see water is the primary ingredient. Regarding sensitive skin, a lot of people or a lot of companies that are formulating for sensitive skin, or they say it is, that means water. They just use water. That's a lot of the first ingredient. And then there's waxes and then there's things to preserve it. And then there might be glycerin and there might be some chemicals but it's a lot of water-based. Like I will hear from customers and they're used to using certain products and they're very simple products that don't have any nutrients. Well, one of the interesting things that I've talked about on some of my articles, I've talked about it in webinars and whatnot, is that water, so let's just take water alone. Water is pretty alkaline for what the skin should be, around 4.5 to 5.0 is a pH. 
So right there, you're putting something, if the, if the main ingredient is something that is more alkaline than what your skin should actually be. I mean, I know when I, my hands were completely destroyed from eczema, water burned so badly. It was hard to touch water. So, you know, you could understand why that's actually kind of shocking that the number one ingredient that they're using is water, something that could make it worse. Yeah, it's interesting because we're looking on certain databases to see like what products might be categorized as safe and unsafe. And I won't list the database, but they're, <laughs> they're laying out certain numbers of a product. And then you look into the products and it's laid out as a, a low number because the majority of the product is water because it's cheap. It's cheap to produce. But then the other ingredients in it are pretty toxic. You might get propylene parabens. You might get some sort of alcohol to preserve it, which is definitely, you know, not great for your skin, especially if it's sensitive skin. You may get, you know, sensitive. You won't see too much fragrance, but instead of essential oils, you'll typically see fragrance. There's a lot of ingredients in there that cover it up and make it something very simple. Is it wrong for me to think or have the attitude that I, I, I can't, I know it's cheap. So there's that, but also that it dries your skin out again. So then you apply more. So it encourages use as opposed to actually nourishing the skin. Am I, am I right in that thought? Totally. Yeah. I mean, they're simple products and they are preserved with nasty ingredients, but over time, yeah, it's deteriorating your skin. Definitely. So what are some chemicals or some names? And by the way, everybody who's listening, not all chemical names mean that it's something bad. (laughs) Acetic acid is vinegar. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. But there are legit chemicals in skincare products that shouldn't be there because they do get absorbed through the skin and they can also be hormone disruptors and other things. So Rachel, what would be some some big red flags that people might read on a label that they should be like, oh, I should probably put this back. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I think the most prominent one for me and the simplest one that you can relate to because it's so rampant in everything is if you take your bottle and you flip it over, you might see fragrance. That's like a big red flag just because you can easily use essential oils and fragrance has phthalates in them and phthalates are hormone disruptors. And phthalates also cause a whole variety of issues from diabetes and weight gain and obesity and endocrine disruption. And there is a study, they were finding a total of $47 billion. I think it was in October 2017, the study came out, and I'm going to read it here. And oh no, it was annual health cost of $340 billion. And this was the Lancet Diabetes Study. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And they're saying our daily exposure to these hazardous, you know, toxic chemicals will cause endocrine disruption. They're in our detergents, they're in pesticides, they're in toys, they're in plastics, and they're also in skincare. So it's pretty, pretty gnarly. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, so you guys actually go the distance and that's the one reason that I never had a skincare regimen before trying your lovely line. I literally would wash my face with water. So (laughs) that that. I literally was doing everything wrong. But what I noticed is that your product, when I flip them over, I understood the ingredient. So why if somebody, you know, you're encouraging people to flip over the bottles that they have. And for many of us, by the way, who have skin rash issues, many of us have boxes of stuff we've tried that has burned or made things worse. But if they're flipping over these ingredient labels and we're saying, look at those, what would be the difference then that they would see between something from a major company, like a major brand that sits in CVS or something compared to what you guys are doing, which is totally different and awesome? I mean, you may see in CVS or in certain stores, and this is an interesting point because I want to say you know, you'll see herbs in our products, but you may go to CVS and I think it's starting to trend right now where people are starting to talk about herbs and they're going to say made with chamomile. And so there may be chamomile in it, but you look at all the other ingredients and you look at where chamomile falls on that list and they have to list a descending order based on the quantity levels in the formula. So you might see chamomile all the way down at the bottom showing you that it's very minimum in that formula but that's all you see. And they do that to get you to think that it's a soothing chamomile formula. And that's greenwashing. 
in our products, you definitely will see aloes or oils, carrier oils and seed oils, and then herb infused oils as the bulk of the formula. So you're getting just a bottle full of nature and herbs and extracts and things that are constantly nourishing your skin. And I love that because as I've done a lot of research, because I was a, I didn't like come into this world an expert on the, the skin microbiome or anything. I've done tons of reading and I continue to do tons of reading. And for anybody who's not aware, your skin needs oil. It actually thrives off of lipids or fats. So putting things on your skin that don't have some sort of lipid basis, there's nothing for the, the microbiome on the skin to actually consume to help it thrive. So it's important to have healthy oils. So what would be some healthy oils like that you guys have found that seem to be really good for the skin? So we use jojoba oil. That's one of our popular oils. We also use sunflower oil, grapeseed oil. Those are just bases for products. And we use those because they are larger carrier oils where we can take herbs. So all of our formulas are herb infused. So instead of just a grapeseed oil or jojoba or sunflower, we're steeping them in a large vat for up to about 30 days. So you're getting this really potent concoction. And then from there, we're adding in seed oils. So we might put goji berry seed oil. We might put broccoli seed oil, chia seed oil, passion fruit seed oil. So so many different fruits and vegetable seed oils into the formula and then also CO2 extracts. So it's definitely the whole combination. I think oils are incredible. Some of my favorite, I love sea buckthorn. I love marula. Jojoba is great. Castor is great for spot treatment. There's a ton of oils that can be used. I want to go back, kind of circle back here. You mentioned the term greenwashing, which before we even started talking, I was like, I don't know what that is. What do you mean? And then you were explaining to me and I realized that I had this experience um, this past summer I was at a hotel in San Diego and they had these really cool, funky, natural looking skincare products. And I was like, oh, this is great. I've never like been to a hotel where I really could actually use what, you know, the little, the little sizes of the, the little uh, travel size bottles that they give you. So I don't know why I flip it over and all of a sudden I'm presented with like all of these different chemicals and colors and fragrance. And I'm like, wait, this, the front, the, the way this does this looks does not match the back. Can you talk a little bit about this concept of greenwashing? Because I think, like, I got almost fooled by that. I would have used it had I not taken that extra second to look at the back. That seems like a pretty big problem. Oh, definitely. I was just at an event last weekend. I won't name the event, but <laughs> but there were tons of brands there. And it was a really cool event, a lot of cool products. And I would go up to these counters and I feel bad for the people that I talk to because I, I don't mean to interrogate, but I want to challenge them and like ask them what they're using because I love, I love skincare. I don't love just our skincare. I love good skincare and I love good quality herbs. And I asked this woman, you know, what gives it its slip? It's very silky and smooth. And she gave me the ingredient list and there's dimethicone which is a petroleum-based silicone. And I'm just like, well, why do you use this if you're using so many herbs? And she's like, well, what is it? And I started chatting with her about it. And she's, I mean, my formulator just told me to use it. And this was like a CBD company. Like they were legit. They had incredible ingredients. But then when you get towards the bottom, they just throw in some of the stuff to make it easier to produce. And I gave her my email. I was like, I'll give you some contacts for different manufacturers to use different ingredients. Um, so you can tell your formulator to start switching it out. She didn't even know that that was happening, but a lot of brands, like I mentioned with the chamomile, they might have like their catchphrase, you know, made with soothing chamomile, or they might say made with all natural ingredients or made with organic ingredients. And maybe you get like two or three products or two or three ingredients that are organic. But that's greenwashing, yeah. Is there no real like industry regulation that? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, you can't say it's a hundred percent organic. You can't call your brand organic. So you know we can't say Anne Marie Skincare Organics because we're not certified organic. But our products actually are more organic than a lot of things out there on the market because of our ingredients. But, you know, there may be some brands, and this is going into a whole other conversation, but there may be some brands that are organic, but some of their ingredients aren't like the highest quality that you possibly could get. It's a tricky, weird world in the world of legislation. And so how can somebody like myself or a listener, 
is there a way that we could vet products or get to understand more of these like really serious ingredients that we should avoid? I mean, I would avoid anything that just isn't natural. I think it's hard to take that step. But I mean, we spend so much time researching a pair of jeans that we're going to buy or a pair of shoes that we're going to buy. Or maybe we'll research the vacation spot that we go to, but we spend hardly any time researching where our skincare comes from or where our food comes from. And I think if it's just taking those extra steps to really do the diligence and to look into the ingredients, maybe go on the website. If they don't list their ingredients in full, email them and say, hey, you don't have your ingredients listed. Can you send them to me? And have them send them to you. And then you look at them and you see what ingredients they are and where they're coming from. And if you don't understand it, do more research on it. And hopefully you can find a brand that lists everything and stands behind what they're doing where you feel comfortable supporting it and purchasing it. So one last point, and I I have no idea how you're going to take this, but it's okay. So (laughs) when I, my hands were all wrecked with eczema, like I went to the dermatologist, they were super inflamed, red, itchy, oozy. It was awful. It's awful. And think about it, your hands, you know? The dermatologist tells me, okay, you're going to put this like steroid cream on. And then I want you to cover it with Vaseline. (laughs) Your face. (laughs) It's just like like coal. It's just (laughs) petroleum on your body. I know. And I've also heard uh, that other people have been told to use Crisco and then wrap the area that's infected with saran wrap to hold it in. I can't even... (laughs) We're not even laughing because it's not, it's really not funny. Like it's It's horrifying. It's sad that dermatologists are saying that too. That's the sad part about it. It's so sad to think how far we've come from nature and how far we've come from like ancient remedies and our soil and our earth. And it brings up a whole other, you know, conversation on our soil depletion and glyphosate and the chemicals sprayed all over our soil in this country and the world. But our doctors are now recommending these drugs because it benefits. And it's a weird, vicious little circle and cycle. It is. And people get stuck into it. And I think that's the one, this is the one, one of the main reasons that I started the Natural Skin Show, because I really want to empower people to make better choices, no matter where they are in their journey. And that's why I was so glad that you were willing to sit down and have this conversation. So I know you guys are, were like super giving when we went to you and said like, hey, can we do something special for our listeners? Tell us a little bit about this gift you've got for everybody that's listening. So we're giving you 20% off on any of our full-size products. There's a code for you to use. And yeah, you can go on our shop page, annemariegianni.com and check out all of our products. You can spend you know, $40, you can spend $500 and you can get 20% off for any of the full size products. Awesome. And don't worry for those of you who are not in front of your computer or you're driving or whatever, I'm going to put all the links in the show notes. So you can just head over to this episode and I'll have everything for you guys there. Thank you, Rachel, so much for joining us. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom in this area because it feels a little bit like the dark ages, like it's a little murky and you guys are trying your best to like pull us through to the, to, I, the, to modern just, day. Yeah. And I want to say, and not to make it too long, but I, you know, for anybody who's listening, who, who's scared to like take that jump or doesn't know what to do or hears from their, from their mom or their best friend or their husband or whoever it is that this is what you should be doing. I would just say, listen to your gut, like go inward and think about how you can shift what you're using. And I mean, maybe you're using incredible things, but I would say question what is given to you on the market because what is out there most likely is not very safe. And I would say, kind of go back to roots of take it slow, question what you're being given, question the things that you're putting on your body and in your body, and really take those extra steps to get in touch with yourself and what's best for yourself. Mm, Those are wise words. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and we'll see you at the next one. 
Wow, you know, that was such a great interview. And I love the fact that Rachel is able to talk so intelligently about this concept of greenwashing. And if you haven't heard of that before, you really need to become aware of it now because it's happening more and more in the beauty and skincare industry for sure. And hopefully with time, as we become more aware as a community, we can demand better products, better quality, and hold companies accountable who are not doing things in a very honest fashion. One more thing before we close out. As you may have heard, Rachel was happy to extend to you guys a 20% discount off of their full-size product line over at Anne Marie Skincare. Here's how to utilize that coupon code. So first of all, you want to go to skinterrupt.com forward slash clean beauty, and then pick whatever items you want. When you're ready to check out, apply the coupon code skinterrupt2019. That's S-K-I-N-T-E-R-R-U-P-T 2019 and 20% will be taken off your order instantly. Well, I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that you have learned a ton from this. And if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please head over and leave them on this post that accompanies this particular podcast. I thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you guys in our next episode. <laughs>